Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of StarCraft where I take you to the missions and how to get the achievements. Today's mission is Night Terrors in the Covert Arps campaign. And the achievements are Night Terrors. Complete the mission. Liberty reigns from above. Destroy 500 units with the Liberators. Save the whales. Don't let any instructor devices get destroyed on normal. This mission's actually pretty neat because it's dealing with a unit that we haven't seen in the Terran stuff before. And those are the extra the Liberators. They're actually pretty neat because they are basically like a Viking, but they don't land to deal uh, damage on the ground. Also, they only deal damage in a certain area instead of being able to attack anything that comes around them. Also, when they're dealing damage on that certain area, they are pretty much stationary and cannot move from that area. The other thing that's cool about this mission is you're kind of in competition with another commander type, and that's Janessa of the Taldarine. Basically, she's wanting to test to see if you're actually worth, you know, the High Lord's time, and she's kind of ticked off because in the last mission, you kind of blew up one of her motherships, so... Even though you've earned the favor of Alarak, you haven't quite earned her favor yet. And so this is kind of one of those tests that she's trying to administer to her, to you to see if you're actually good enough to be an ally of the Taladarine. And the cool thing about Nova is Nova as a character isn't above, you know, using a shady tactic every once in a while. I mean, she's an infiltrator and an assassin, so she isn't above using a dirty-handed trick to defeat the enemy. And it's definitely a change from most of the other commanders, because with Kerrigan, she was more of, you know, primal focus, and everything she was doing, she was doing it for revenge. Whereas Raynor, he was doing it to, at first he was doing it for revenge. Then he became exposed to the truth, and the, especially the truth of Kerrigan's role to play in the events of StarCraft. And after that, he became more, I guess you would say, more honorable and, you know, focused on the greater good rather than just, I'm out for revenge. And in a, t in a way, it does cost him, because when he when he set out, they were drilling into the Dominion forces hard, and if he hadn't taken his forces to Char, he probably could have, uh, you know, overthrown Arcturus Minks, but it was because he was willing to sacrifice that goal for the greater good that the Dominion was able to retake and take hold of their territories, and J uh, Jim Rayner's forces became a rebel alliance again, instead of an actual force to be reckoned with. And also you have Artanis, which Artanis is a Protoss, and he's the pretty much the definition of Protoss, which means very honorable, very, you know, duty until death. Which is, it's alright, but it doesn't make for a very interesting character. Which is why I like, I like Nova as being a commander, because she's, again, she's an assassin. She's stealthy, even though I hate stealth gameplay. <laughs> I am absolutely terrible with stealth gameplay. Well, anyways, back to the mission we're doing, and less about me gushing over story. Well... On this mission, it's pretty much a pretty easy escort type mission. Well, not an escort mission. You're you're basically trying to prevent Janessa from destroying any of the extractors. Because if she destroys the extractors, then you don't get the achievement and you don't get any of the terrazine. Also, you have to deal with there's a lot of Zerg on this planet, so... And here they come. And the extractors are pretty neat, 
They do a lot of damage compared to the, like, the Vikings and stuff like that. It's just that they have to transform back and forth between area da air aerial damage and ground damage. And you can make this easier because they do have an equip equipment that makes that transformation between ground and air a lot faster. And that's what I have equipped to my Liberators right now is it basically allows them to switch between ground and air in like about two seconds versus like a five second transformation time which doesn't sound like it'd be that much but when you're in the middle of battle and you need to switch you know you're being attacked just that three second difference can be a lot so and as you saw there's an expansion right there so as soon as you get defenses set up at home you can go ahead and head out that way now the one thing about this mission if you do go with the defensive setup which I would recommend you doing, it does take a little while to get going, which is why I pretty much haven't left the base yet. Because it's one of those things that I want to be sure that the base at home is going to be safe before I even try to head out, because your base is going to be attacked by Zerg, and it's going to be attacked by Protoss, just like in the last mission. And as far as defending the checkpoints, once you've marched over there, it's not too difficult because basically all you have to do is set up a perimeter around Nova while she's doing her hacky smith thing. And basically all the Zerg just blindly walk into your Liberator's damage areas and they don't really think, so they don't try to go around it or anything like that. So. Basically, all you got to do is lay down the ground selections, and they take care of everything for you. As far as attack speed, they're not very fast, but they do do a lot of damage, so just keep that in mind. the Protoss are already coming to stop you. I would recommend keeping the snipe ability on Kerrigan in general just because it's so hard to defeat any of these things without it. Also keep an eye on Kerrigan. I mean not Kerrigan, Nova, because she is very squishy. Because she's a dang stealth person and she dies a lot. <laughs> Alright, now all you gotta do is lay up your perimeter and you'll be fine. And the cool thing is if you have her detector helmet on, equipped, it shows you where all the Zerg are going to be coming from. Or you can just do like I did here and set everything up in a small circle right here in the middle. That just surrounds her. And I would kind of, they're, like with most missions, this mission does have a rhythm to it, so it's best to wait for the Protoss to attack, then move out to take one of these extractors down. Actually, well, defend against the Protoss attack, then move out to take an extractor. Because you don't want to have to be fighting the Zerg and the Protoss at the same time. Because unless you're a really badass, and I'm not saying you aren't, because a lot of you are, <laughs> I'm just saying it's a whole lot easier to take one force on a at a time than do a pincer attack on yourself. <laughs> and as you can see, once you get about like three or four liberators, 
you don't really have to worry about anything getting too close to the extractor before it's released because it's got enough firepower to defend it so First extractor is free. I do think it's pretty neat that we find out that Terrazine comes from these creatures. And also apparently it's the lifeblood of the planet that they're on. El Shear. Yeah, if you don't know, Terrazine apparently is a very psychotropic, psychotropic drug, or, er, well, gas, and it basically has the ability to enhance or focus mental powers and stuff like that, like sonic abilities, and basically the ability to read minds or use telekinesis. So it's re it was mainly used by the Protoss because of their race's makeup because the Kala is basically one giant you know one giant basic uh it's a giant basic hive mind but everybody has their own free will versus the basic makeup of the Zerg where everyone is subject to the leader's will Which, because when you look at it, the Zerg and the Protoss, structurally, they're not a very different race. It's just the Zerg are subject to the will of their leaders. Like, the commanders have the ability to override their minions' will and make them do as they wish. Whereas the Protoss are very much a freedom race, but they still have that hive mind link. They have the ability to look in... It's not so much a hive mind, as they have the ability to share memories. They can share experiences with the Protoss around them, and they can feel everything that that Protoss felt about that memory, all the way down to how it made them, you know, how it made them feel, if it made them happy, if it made them sad, their emotional responses to that memory. Whereas the Zerg hive mind is very much, it's a very connected entity. And here you can see I'm going to intercept another one of Janessa's attacks. But I've got resistance in the way, so I'm getting it out of the way by blowing it away. <laughs> And one of the other differences that is between the, the Protoss and the Zerg is the Protoss basically are a very rigid formed race, but they do have the ability to adapt their technology and their, you know, the way they're, they're thinking. Whereas the Zerg are pretty much the same way, but instead of adapting their way of thinking, they adapt their bodies. They basically absorb essence and evolve. It's just in the pro in the hive zerg or the infected zerg, you see a very derived evolution. Whereas when you have primal zerg, they are very kind of chaotic in their evolution because each different zerg. Primal Zerg has a different evolution for itself. Something that made it the way it is. Something that was better than any other choice at that time. Whereas with the Infected Zerg or the Hive Zerg, they have the basic overriding will of their commander saying, okay, you need to evolve that, you need to evolve this. Versus, okay, I just ate, you know, 50 deer, 
I'm going to evolve, you know, legs and stuff that have the ability to run and prance and hop over things. Now, the way I'm setting this up, when you set your liberators, be sure they're either inside or behind the circles, because if you don't do that, when you set them up, basically they can be outside and behind where they need to be and get picked off by the incoming forces. And I didn't think about that when I did this, so the forces that come in from the left side over here actually start picking off some of my liberators and I have to reposition them. So just be aware of that when the time comes. As you can see, they're starting to try to pick off my liberators at the back here, so I'm having to rearrange the way they're set up there. And this way they can attack them before they actually start doing damage to the liberators. off Nova. <laughs> Nova, get back in there. Yeah, that is the one complaint I do have about Nova is I understand she's a stealth commander, but at the same time she is one of the weakest in terms of life because if she gets attacked and you're not paying attention for like three or four seconds, she's dead. She's just dead. At least with the other commanders, oh, you know, they're in the middle of battle, they can hold their own, they can hold their own. Oh, well, they're starting to show a little bit of, you know, damage. I'll pull them back for, like, maybe, you know, five seconds. Alright, they're good enough to send right back into the fray. Nova, it's like, oh, I blinked and she's at one. Okay, pull her back. Well, she's starting to get live, she's starting to get live. Alright, send her back into the fray. Oh, she's dead again. <laughs> Did I mention I don't like stealth missions? <laughs> But yeah, you saw how fast that transformation was. That's the equipment that's on them right now. I do believe I have an attack incoming on my base. Dez attack me. Keep the spread pretty good, huh? <laughs> Also, the thing I learned about the about Nova's Ravens is they have the ability to deploy drones that heal her units, well, her mechanical units. So, she's actually got a pseudo-medic unit because it only has a timed life on it. Here comes the Protoss. Oh, look, they died. <laughs> must be well it's not a warp prism but the phoenix did i need to take that thing out all right 
that prism's down. And that prism's down. <laughs> well, that was pretty simple. And look, they're trying to launch another attack against one of the extractors. Gotta get over there and stop them. <laughs> Which, I sound all calm right now. During this mission, I was probably going, Crap, 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 crap! Stop it, stop it! <laughs> oh yes, when you do this part, not only do you get an expansion, but you also get, like, additional troops and stuff like that, so... That's good, at least. Here comes the Protoss, which is pretty easy to take them out because the Liberators do have a very good anti-air capability. Oops. They're getting in through the top. Can't let that happen. We'll start building while I'm here. <laughs> Night is warm. Can't have that. I love the detail in the shadow work and stuff like that because you can see some of the whales that you've just, the terrazine whales that you've freed are being able to fly through the air and stuff like that. So it's actually pretty neat. Oh, there's a dang Nidus Worm in the base that I didn't notice. <laughs> the one bad thing about Nidus Worms is when they burst through the ground, they throw creep everywhere. The only problem with creep is you can't build on top of creep, so... Yeah, apparently when you start releasing them, they start putting off a really high psionic frequency, which dr draws the Zerg in. That's why they're coming in there to try to attack. Yeah, the cool thing about the Liberators is you can kind of caterpillar your way across the map with its air with its downed area, with its ground area bombardment. So it's pretty neat. Oh yes, this is pretty neat because they have special side missions that you do for equipment, and they're kind of like mini commander missions, is what they are. This is a callback to the, I think, the Heart of the Swarm campaign, because you had to fight one of these in the Heart of Swarm, now you got to fight two of them. And as long as you know the old don't stand in the fire mantra, you'll be alright for this, for these missions. Just keep moving, don't stand in fire, try to destroy things as they try to destroy you. <laughs> Good thing this wasn't... Don't take any damage from these things. Oops. Yeah. 
I walked into that one. There we go. There's the equip. Nova is probably the only one I actually suggest doing the bonus missions on. Just because, like, you don't really need it for achievements or anything like that, but you do need the equipment that she gives out, so. Move it. That poor overseer's like, oh crap! <laughs> I'm gonna die! And then he comes back, he's like, ah, can't kill me that easily. Well, maybe you can. Oh no, they're attacking my base. Those monsters, how could they? And as always, when you're using bunkers, make sure you have SCVs to repair them, because if you don't, you will just wind up wasting resources rebuilding the bunkers and so on. <laughs> Look, it's a flower of death! <laughs> yeah, for the most part, you only get attacked by ground units on this, except for with the Protoss you get attacked with flying units, so it's it's a bit of a mishup max up mashup. Yeah. Which is why the Liberators are so good, is because ground forces they just completely run through. And air forces, as long as you keep like three or four of them transformed into air mode, you'll have no problems there. And I really wouldn't worry about this base too much because literally it's slowing them down while you're taking, while you're get, filling up one of the extractors, so. really good. <laughs> Damn it, Nova, why do you always have to die? <laughs> Don't worry, Space Well will be safe. Distractor, distractor, yes. You will not attack a distractor. <laughs> that carrier's like, I'm gonna defeat. Oh god! And of course, I'm just now thinking about building the upgrades for things. <laughs> I'm like, oh right, these things have armor and stuff. Oops. I never said I was the brightest when I was doing these missions. I just said, hey, look how I was able to bumble my way through and get all the achievements.
Yay, Nova's back. Hey, stay put. You guys stay at home. You guys go up there. Alright. Time to deploy the Flower of Death. <laughs> There's my extractor bonus. Hey, leave that truck alone. Leave that truck alone. Hope I wasn't supposed to save them people. <laughs> While that whale is being saved, I'm gonna go up and do that mission or equipment mission. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> or nope, this is a another whale. I thought it was another equipment mission. Oops. <laughs> Nova, where are you at? Get up in there. Whatever, Janessa. <laughs> Bit. So that's just great. And it burrows. Yay! Oh, and it lays eggs. Terrific. <laughs> Again, I'm glad the, the achievements weren't don't take damage from these things. Oh, whoops. Hey, hey, you, get back here. Oh, stop, stop doing that. Especially make sure you take out the big eggs. Because the last thing you need is an ultralisk or something like that popping up. <laughs> You're going to have a hard enough time dealing with this dude. Where are you at? No! And dead. Time to get the heck out of here. <laughs> hey, stop hitting that. face. Yay! Well guys, this has been Night Terrors and how to get the achievement. If y'all like what y'all saw, go ahead and give me a like and a comment and a share down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.